Hello, my name is Kristen. This is Kristen Craze Books. So fall is definitely in the air. It is cool today. I'm in an oversized sweatshirt and I am just loving life at the moment. This is like my happy place, my happy weather. This is where I thrive. So I thought I would do a try a chapter tag. I believe I've done one of these at the beginning of my channel. I'll link that down below. But I am in the middle of She Who Became the Sun by Shelley Parker Chan. And yeah, this is excellent. I think this is gonna be one of my best books of the year. And I know that when I read a book like this one, it's so easy for me to fall into a slump, to not know what to pick up next because it's often not fair to the next book you read when you just read something as great as this. It did take me a while to really get into it, but I loved our main character right from the start. Interesting politics, interesting world. I'm vlogging my experience of reading this, so I think that'll be up before this video. But if not, I will link to it eventually or you'll see it on my channel soon. But yeah, loving that. So what I decided to do was pick five books that are completely different from one another, different genres, and read the first chapter or two from each of them and then decide what book I'm going to pick up after She Who Became the Sun. That way I know that I'm already invested in it. It's something that I'm going to enjoy and it just seems like a smart thing to do. So the first one is... The Gollum and the Ginny, and this is by Helene Wecker, and um, I've had this for years. This has been on my TBR for I couldn't tell you how long, and my gut tells me I'm going to love this. The sequel just came out. I'm getting more and more into fantasy. I just have this feeling, and like this cover alone just screams cold leather. I just have a great feeling about this one, but the writing, I don't know if you can see that. There you go. The writing in here is quite small, and it is around 500 pages. But I just know I'm going to love this. But, so we'll see if I'm in the mood for this. But I'm going to read a couple chapters and see what I think. So the next book I'm going to try is actually this year's winner of the Pulitzer Prize. And that is The Night Watchman by Louise Erdrich. And I've been meaning to read something by this author for years. People often recommend her to me. Actually, the Storygraph has about five or six of her, her books in my recommendations list. So I just, all the signs are pointing to the fact that I'm going to love this. And all I know is that we're following a night watchman who I believe he works at a jewelry place, at a jewel bearing plant, and that he is part of the Chippewa and he's a council member and him and his other council members are trying to come to terms with the emancipation bill that the United States Congress put out in the 1950s and they know that this is going to affect them and it isn't about freedom, it is a termination that threatens the rights of Native Americans to their land and their very identity. So this is going to be more hard hitting than what I've been reading lately. This tackles some hard hitting themes, but this is more contemporary and I've heard all of Louise Erdrich's books are beautiful. So I have a feeling I'm going to fall in love with the writing in that one. And then we have the newest book to my shelves. I actually saw this at the drugstore and I had to pick it up. It is My Heart is a Chainsaw by Stephen Graham Jones. I read uh, The Only Good Indians last year, fell in love with it. It's actually the book that really helped me to embrace horror. I've been on a journey with horror over the last year, but Stephen Graham Jones is the one that started it all. And I know that this is an homage to the slasher film. And I think it also has the final girl trope, like the final girls by Riley Seeger and the final girl support group by Grady Hendrix. I think it's kind of in that vein, but I think that I probably will enjoy Stephen Graham's version of that trope the most. So I'm excited about this one. I'm going to rank which ones I think I'm going to like the best, but I have a feeling this is going to be at the top. And I had to throw in a nonfiction. Actually, Libro FM sent me Eric Larson's newest book that is actually his first fiction book, but I have not read any of his nonfiction, and I've actually found Thunderstruck in a free little library, a little free library, and I've been wanting to read it ever since. I know all of his books are true crime. And this one is, it tells the story of two men whose lives intersect during one of the greatest criminal chases of all time. So really that little synopsis is all I need to know. I know that his nonfiction reads like more like narrative nonfiction and everything that he writes gets good reviews. And it's funny cause I was flipping through the pages and I think the person that donated this stopped at page 76. And it's actually a receipt from 2013 and Barnes and Noble. I'm in Canada. We don't have Barnes and Noble, so I thought that was fun. And then the last one is 
not like any of these other books. It's a YA fantasy, Crown of Feathers by Nikki Palpretto. And I kind of bought this one on a whim. I believe Kristen at Kristen is fully booked, loves this. And I just picked it up because based on her recommendation and I found it for a good price, I also have the sequel. And I really wanted to get to this this summer, but I didn't. But something about it makes me think it's more of a fall book. And I know that the third and final book just came out. So if I like this, maybe it can marathon the entire thing and has a great map so that's always a selling feature for me and it says i had a sister once i promised her the throne would not come between us but it is a fact of life that one must kill or be killed rule or be ruled sometimes the title of queen is given sometimes it must be taken so that captures me right away i love books about sisters i love books about power so i have a good feeling about that one as well so those are five books i'm going to try and honestly I think I'm gonna love all these. These are all pretty much five-star predictions for me, but I have a feeling My Heart is a Chainsaw is the one that I'm most in the mood for because I've read three horror books already this month. But we'll see because all of them are really calling to me. So what I'm gonna start with is, let's do The Gollum and the Ginny first. And I'll read the first couple chapters. I don't know how many pages, we'll see. And I'll give you my thoughts. Okay, so I read the first chapter of The Gollum and the Ginny and that was about 17 pages and I'm already invested in this. I really like the writing, although the text itself is really small. I think this is one that I will probably try and get the audiobook. I do think it's on script and listen to it as I read it because I could see this hurting my eyes eventually. But the first chapter is really about the Gollum and the creation of the Gollum and I didn't realize that the Gollum was made to look like a real woman. Their master created them to be their wife, essentially. And the maker asked for what qualities he was looking for in a woman, and he said intelligence and curiosity. So obviously the Gollum will have those traits. So I think that will make her unique and interesting. And her and her master were traveling on a ship to Ellis Island and her master actually dies on the way there. So the chapter ends with her getting off the, off the ship. So no idea where the story is going, but I know that Gollums have a master. They are obedient. So now that hers has died, I'm wondering what's gonna to happen to her. And yep, I already love, really liking the writing. I wonder if Helene Wecker has written anything else besides this series, but I'm gonna check that out. But yeah, I don't know that this is the one that I We'll pick up now because it just seems like a lot and this was a lot and it's taking me a bit to get through so I just don't know that I want something so heavy in the writing and the atmosphere but we'll see and I think I'm going to do Thunderstruck next because this one has a ship in the first chapter it just seems appropriate so let me dive into the first chapter of this one Okay, so I read the first 14 pages of Thunderstruck and it's completely different from what I was expecting. It's a lot of conversations around scientists and the advancements of technology and scientific discovery at this time. And it actually took me a while to read these pages and I'm not sure how, what's going on in the, that first part it has to do with the overall story because it isn't a submerger mystery. Yes, yeah, so I don't know how that all comes back around. If you have read Thunderstruck, let me know if it's worth sticking with because that was a little bit tedious for me. I wasn't as intrigued by it right at the, bat, at the start as I thought it was gonna be, but I'm definitely gonna hang on to it. I know that Eric Larson's books are good on audio, so maybe I'll try that. And I know his big one is The Devil in the White City, so maybe that's a better place to start with Eric L Larson. So let me know if you've read this. Now I'm going to pick up The Night Watchman. I think so far The Night Watchman is the winner for me. I was captivated by the writing right away. It's exactly my kind of writing style. It's beautiful but to the point. Not too flowery. 
but also kind of special. And I love the way that the author describes her characters. The first chapter is only about 12 pages, but I already feel like I connect with Patrice and I understand her. So Patrice works at a plant and she seems to be supporting her whole family. She has a rocky relationship with her father who I believe is abusive and she's putting a, a little bit of money away from her paycheck in order to get away is what it seems like. So that's all that's happened so far but I'm very intrigued by this and I cannot wait to see where it goes. And I mean, it won the Pulitzer. I don't always love the Pulitzer Prize winners but I always tend to try them. And I know that everybody has raved about this one and I can see why already from the first 12 pages. So right now, this is the one I'm most likely to pick up. I think I'm going to try Crown of Feathers next and then I can end with the one that I thought that I would be the most drawn to. So I can go for some YA fantasy. So we'll see what I think. Okay, right at the top above the chapter, it says, I had a sister once. If I had known then what I know now, I might have chosen not to love her. But is love ever truly a choice? So I love that kind of stuff that just grabs you right away. And the first line is, Veronica gathered the bones of the dead. So that's what I love about fantasy. There has a way of just grabbing you right from the beginning, but I'm gonna continue reading. Okay, now this is interesting. I especially love that the first chapter included, it's like a page from a fictional book from this world and it seems that that is a common theme throughout. So I love those little elements like that that really add to the realism of the story. And the first chapter is from Veronica's perspective and then I believe the second one's from her sister Val's perspective. And I think they are completely different. Veronica has an affinity for animals. She's always wanted to be a phoenix rider but they were all killed during a war, but it seems they have found a phoenix egg and at the end of the chapter it's about to hatch, so no idea where this is going, of course, I only read the first chapter, but I'm into it. Now, it's just a matter of what I'm in the mood for because these are very, very different. Maybe My Heart is a Chainsaw will help me with this dilemma, but these are so different. I am reading a fantasy now, so I am tempted to pick up The Night Watchmen, but I'll have to think about it and I'm just hoping that maybe uh, my heart is a chainsaw will give me some clarity. So this is the last one. I'll just read the first chapter and then I'll update you. Wow, we really just get into the action with this one. I don't know if you saw it in my face. This gets gruesome. We're following a group of friends on a canoe in Idaho and something happens to them and it's not clear what but it's kind of graphic there's lots of discussion about the smell so i'm curious to see what that's about and i love that Stephen graham jones just r jumps right into it and i just flew through those first 10 pages and i'm very curious to see where this goes i just don't know that this is what i'm in the mood for i'm really torn between these two i think and i think what i'm going to do is read the night watchman first then I'll pick up My Heart is a Chainsaw and then I will probably pick up Crown of Feathers. These two, I'm such a mood reader that these two are definitely going to be, have to be the right place at the right time. I can have to be in the mood for them. I am glad that I finally at least tried The Gollum and the Ginny and that I know I like the writing. I know it's something that I'm interested in, but it's just, I really have to be in the mood for something like that. This one, Please give me your opinions on Thunderstruck if you've read it or Eric Larson in general. Let me know if this is a book worth reading or if I should just listen to The Devil in the White City. Love to hear your thoughts on those. But I'm going to read The Night Watchman and I'm going to vlog it. So look out for that. And I'll probably get to My Heart is a Chainsaw in that same vlog. So I always love doing these tags. It always gives me so much clarity on my mood reading. I'm such a mood reader. And I've start, I talked about this in my last vlog, but I've started doing this thing where I create mood reading mood boards on Pinterest. So you just take different photos that connect with the books you've read. So like for White Smoke, I just read White Smoke. I did like a haunted house and some other things that are spirally or like hold back the tide. I did like a creepy cliff and a cave, things like that. So then when you look at your 
bored at the end of the month it really reflects your reading because I'm not much of an annotator but looking at it through pictures is really interesting so if I had done that in June it would have been a lot lighter more romance but now that we're into September it's really dark so it'll be interesting to throw a book like this in the mix I'm not sure what kind of photos I'll be inspired to add to that board but I'm excited to find out and I forgot that this is semi-autobiographical I do believe that the character of Thomas is inspired by the author's grandfather so that just adds another layer to the story more connection so and I haven't read like a literary fiction in a minute so I'm excited to dive into this so let me know if you've read any of these if you've done a try chapter tag please leave it in the comments I love watching these videos thanks again for your time I'll talk to you again soon bye for now